So uh, the play's called Vit Gone. It's getting produced here at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival at uh, the Thomas Theater. Uh, and it's a sex comedy about my parents, <laughs> about how they got together. It's a love story. It's a romantic comedy about my parents, uh, about how they got together in 1975 uh, in a refugee camp in Arkansas. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess like, like any person, ever, like, or any person, I think everyone has like a, a family story they want to tell. Like, I think everyone has an interesting family story, right? Uh, I just being a playwright, I get the opportunity to tell those stories out loud and have people hear them. And so I, I had this impetus. I mean, I guess I always wanted to write a story about my folks. Um, and so South Coast Rep uh, had commissioned me to write this play, or write a play. And uh, I thought this was a great opportunity to, to give it a try after you know years of avoiding it because I thought I was way too immature. And instead of finding that I was mature enough to do it, I just embraced my immaturity and wrote it with all the kind of reverence that I'm kind of used to, to doing. Uh, how I became involved in this play was, I, I was coerced, I was forced. No, I'm you wanted to do I it. I wanted to do it. Uh, we were working on another project at the time and we were having a fantastic time in rehearsal and it was a piece that we had devised together. You had a good time. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, at, at one of the breaks for that, um, PC started telling me that he was writing this play and he went into the story of how his parents met. Um, and it wasn't even talking about the play itself, like what Viet Gone was. It was just simply the story of how his parents met and got together and how they, what their journey was in America. And it was so riveting. I, I knew immediately, like, I want to work on this play. I want to work on this play. And uh, and so then once he told me that story, and I, he couldn't get rid of me, so I've been sort of holding on. Um, but we have been working, um, you know, I, I, I guess I've read it, I mean, I've been part of it since the first draft. Um, and, you know, have been sort of along every step of the way. And um, it's been very gratifying. And, uh, you know, you're always, I've always wanted to write stuff about my family. Because I mean, I know that being Vietnamese immigrants, uh, to this country. There's not a lot of stories about Vietnam when it comes to stories from our perspective. It's, it's, it tends to be, you know, they, you know, when you think about Vietnam, most of the stories are from a soldier's perspective, specifically American soldier's perspective, uh, whether it be platoon or full metal jacket or something like that. And uh, so growing up, I knew that there was a lack of those stories. So I was like, at some point, I want to tell my parents' stories, the stories that I grew up knowing about. Um, and then when I sat down and decided that I was going to write this play, uh, I, I kind of, you know, uh, I think, and, and I, I hear this is kind of typical with almost anyone from an immigrant background, if that immigrant experience was tumultuous, whether it's from a war situation or, you know, if it's a boat person situation, that those generations of immigrants don't like talking about their stories. They don't like telling the stories because they don't like to rehash a painful past. And so I kind of had to lie to my folks to get them to talk about it uh, and going, oh, well, I'm not going to tell your story. I'm telling like a general Vietnamese story about general Vietnamese people. But if you can specifically tell me your story, that will help me create characters that are more authentic. And then at some point, which since they didn't feel like they were under the microscope, they just felt more comfortable telling me everything. And at some point, uh, they they... They, they kind of went, oh, you know how we told you this love story, you know, your whole, the love story I grew up knowing since I was a little kid to now was mom and dad met in a refugee camp and it was love at first sight and they knew they were going to be together forever. And then my dad, my mom, both, they were together and they were like, oh, you know when we told you that? Oh, that was all a lie. We just did it right away. <laughs> and that grossed me out. Like completely like, oh, uh, can you not talk about it that way? And then, and, and that kind of like, that tickle that they got from like grossing out their kid just made them just like, no, now we're telling you everything. And they kind of just went into it and it kind of had to shape the play. And I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm writing a sex comedy about my folks. <laughs> um, but, and then of course, as they kept telling the stories for like months on end, this finally dawned on them that it wasn't a general story. It was a very specific story about them. And, and then they're like, you're not gonna write that down and put it in front of people, right? I'm like, Yes, I think I have to, Mom. And, and so they kind of know that I'm doing it. I think they're kind of in denial thinking that I didn't do that. So they don't actually know 
how revealing it is about their love story. But um, but yeah, so that that that's that's how how I got information from my parents. I just lied to them. I kind of conned them into telling uh, their love story to me. Uh, they're gonna find out uh, at opening night for the South Coast Repertory production that during you know during that because that's they're, they're coming up for that one. So we'll see how if they still you know accept me as their son. <laughs> I might no longer be their kid. After that. Like, we don't know you. <laughs> like when I, when I started writing this, you know, being uh, you know a Vietnamese kid, like I, I think uh, I, growing up, I had a revulsion uh, to anything that made me feel not American, uh, and and specifically stories that that made me feel like a foreigner. Uh, you know, with accents and and paper dragons or anything like that, made me definitely. I had this kind of like, oh, I don't want to feel like that. I don't want that to be part of how people see me. And so when I went to sit down and write Vit Gone, I kind of was writing it for the 16-year-old version of myself because I know there's a lot of Asian American kids, specifically Vietnamese American kids, that probably have that same, because I've had that conversation with a lot of folks um, uh, that look like this, uh, and, 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 and they kind of have that same like, oh, yeah, I know what that feels like. And so when I sat down to write it, I, I kind of used, instead of trying to make it feel foreign, I embraced how I speak now today. So the language of the play is very 2015. It's, it uses a lot of you know, the slang that I use, a lot of kind of the hip hop culture that I grew up in uh, to tell that story. But all the facts and all the history is very based and, and very true to 1975 and that experience. But the language, the sound, um, the color of the play is very reflective of of, of who I am today, the the generate you know, a very youthful generation. So I was writing for that 16 year old, so they can feel like, oh, this is the story of my parents, and not feel that kind of immediate blockade of like, oh no, people are going to think I have an accent and, and all that, because it's a weird thing. As soon as you have a whole bunch of folks come out speaking in pidgin English, you know, when you're 16, you're like, it, it kind of, I don't know, it, it made me feel very uncomfortable because I don't want people to think that's that you know, like it got in the way of me hearing those stories. Uh, in a strange way, and, and I think the weird thing is the more specific I got into writing this kind of weird, you know, pop culture version of the 1975 story about my folks, it became more universal in a kind of arbitrary way, because I was specifically trying to attract 16-year-olds and, and youthful folks that, that when we finally had it read in front of a multi-generational multi uh, audience, uh, they all still kind of, uh, kind of embraced it in a kind of weirdly magical way. I mean, and I didn't expect that, I don't think May expected it either, because we forget, or I forgot, that the story was for a generation much older than me that grew up in the 70s, who had a very specific feeling about the Vietnam War and about uh, that experience. And so when they, they saw that, it was their story already. And so, so they were already attracted to the play, and then to a generation that was my, my generation, it was very much like, oh, these are stories I grew up from my parents. And then a generation younger than me who only knows Vietnam in that kind of sense that it's, it's a, a, a catchphrase in politics where it's like, if we're, if we're not careful in Iraq, it might become another Vietnam. If we're not careful in Afghanistan, it'll become another Vietnam. That's how people know Vietnam. And so they were attracted because it was a history they didn't know. And so suddenly, I, I didn't realize how, how, how easily it captured so many different people. Uh, even though my, my goal was very specific, it ended up being something that caught a lot more folks and eventually found its way here. Uh, this play is it's so deeply personal to me, even though it's not my story. Um, as Kui said, it's very much, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a coming to America story. Um, and so my parents didn't have the same experience. Um, but certainly to come arrive at a place where they knew no one and they lost their own country and that are always in between cultures, um, that was something that I knew very well. Um, uh, but what is truly, and I don't know, it just grabs you by the heart, this play, because it's so funny. It's so, um, there's so much love between all of these characters and then they also are, undergoing some of the most traumatic stress that of losing your country, you know, coming from a place of uh, violence and war and finding um, love and connection with one another. And so it's the, it's the greatest story about the, 
the power of the human spirit that we need that and uh, and it's triumphant in the way um, but it's also a lot of fun for me to direct I mean it has hip-hop it has um, uh, you know many many different locations it has many different uh, you know the actors it's a cast of five and they play uh, several different uh, people so it's trying to figure out hmm how do I make that uh, transition happen so as a problem solver as, and as a director it gives me a lot of things to think about and to play around with um, and so the playfulness of it the joy that it has the fun the spontaneity as well as the heart are all things that I look for in a play